right, so now we're getting into adding steps, basically. Uh, we are going to be flying the F-15C. Notice I've named us Pincushion here because we are going to be doing missile evasion <coughs> while being unable to fire back. Um, let's see. I'm actually, uh, so we've set up an unarmed F-15 carrying three fuel tanks because I kind of, you know, you want to build the habit of dropping those tanks when, when you get, when hostile uh, contact is imminent. So I loaded those up and then our Sukhoi here, let's see, let's change it up a little bit. So he's going to have four radar guided R27 ERs, two infrared guided R27 ETs. Now these are the same missile with different seeker heads. These four here are guided by radar obviously and these our R27 ETs, which are infrared guided. If you look at our flanker over here, this thing on its nose right in front of the cockpit is an IRST burst. Oops, yeah, the radar you can see right there too. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't know you could do that. Huh. Anyway, this thing here is like an infrared seeker camera, and what that allows you to, the Sukhoi and MiG 29 drivers to do is. detect infrared signatures at pretty long range. So traditionally radar guided missiles have been long range and infrared missiles have been short short range kind of within visual dogfight missile type things but the, these kind of Russian designs <coughs> kind of blur the lines a little bit. So we've got our medium range ERs here and our R27 ETs. These can be infrared guided so we're gonna have to watch that. You know what? Let's not muddy the waters too much. Let's just go with a bunch of radar guided missiles. We're going to have to dodge. We'll come back to this stuff later. <laughs> but just kind of keep it in mind. And this is another really good reason why it's a bad idea to ever get close to a Sukhoi 27 or a Big 29. <laughs> they also have this pilot's uh, helmet here. He has a helmet mounted sight, which lets him look over his shoulder and stuff like that and queue up missiles. Uh, so that makes it really dangerous. Anyway, let's uh, let's get cracking here. So we're at a range, starting at a range of about 75 miles. Now, uh, first off, a little, little caveat with this. There's no such thing as a guaranteed kill or a guaranteed evasion. It's all probabilities. So what you're doing is fighting for every little bit of probability that the missile won't hit you. In the same way he's fighting for every bit of probability that a missile will hit you. So so the basics of defeating a missile are this. For a missile to hit a target it has to have two things basically. It has to have a good guidance system. It has to know where you are using uh, usually either radar or infrared guidance. And it has to have enough energy to physically reach you. So therefore, there are two ways to defeat the missile. One is to defeat its guidance. You can call that spoofing it. <coughs> and you can do that through different ways, but you have to know what kind of guidance system they're using and act appropriately. And the second way is to defeat it kind of kinetically by bleeding it out of energy, or dodging it, or getting out of its way, you're, you're just kind of physically not being where it's going. Uh, we'll get to that too. Um, but the best defenses are going to use a combination of both. Again, it's all about probabilities. You want to stack those in your favor as much as you can, or you're going to be uh, getting a missile into the face, or the tailpipe, or whatever. So let's get going. So we're going to talk about countermeasures here. First kind of measure I'm going to talk about, and this is part of the kind of measure suite in most aircraft, is at least most modern aircraft is the RWR. Like in the F in a 15, they call it the twos, or the RWR. We're just going to call it the RWR. Basically, this is a series of antennas all over the aircraft that detect incoming radar beams, radar rays, and each radar set has kind of a unique signature which allows it to identify what kind of radar it's coming from. Here it says 29, which it will show for both the MiG-29 Fulcrum and the Su-27 Flanker since they carry the same radar set. Um, and let's go to our radar here. Let's turn that on and move the range out to 
80 miles because we know he's at about 70 by now. For our radar to work, for any radar to work, it sends out signals from the, usually the nose of the aircraft and they go out into space in a kind of a flashlight shaped cone most of the time. And for us to detect the target, those signals have to bounce off the target and return back to the antenna in the nose of the aircraft. So right now, even though we know he's there because we can see his radar looking for us, we have, we're sending out radar beams here, but they are not bouncing off in enough strength to, for us to get a signal. So there's that. And that same thing may be happening to him too. We're detecting his radar beams, but that doesn't necessarily mean, just because you see a signal here on the RWR, does not mean that he knows we're there. It just means we're detecting what direction he's coming from, that he's emitting radar beams, and what kind of, uh, probably what kind of air, airplane he's flying. Also, since we're coming into contact with the enemy, see right here where it says fuel, 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 that's our three fuel tanks. I'm going to press left alt R and release them. That'll increase our speed. Okay, so now we've detected our target. Let's go ahead and lock him up. Let's put it in TWS mode. It's always a good habit to get in. Lock him to get range. He's at 45 miles. That's our detection range here, apparently today. And as we get closer, you can hear you can hear that ping, ping, ping. That's his radar pinging us. And as we get closer, and he decides he wants to hard lock us and, and fire a missile, that tone will change and it'll start shutting up. Okay, so this first missile defense. I'm going to go to active pause here. I'm going to try and defeat the missile kinetically. Basically, once that missile gets fired, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to turn... Well, you know what? Let's just turn away and run the other way and see what happens. Depends on when he fires the missile. If he fires it at maximum range, all I have to do is turn around and go back where I came from. And chances are pretty good it's going to run out of fuel before it reaches me. No, I misspoke, actually. It's going to run out of fuel long before it reaches me. Missile flight kind of have two phases to them. Uh, when they come off the rail, when you fire them, here we go. He's hard locked us. Tick, 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 you hear that? And soon we're going to get a missile fired at us. No one. Okay, so he fired at 25 miles, and I know for damn sure that I don't want to spend too much time in range of that missile. So I just turn around and go back where I came from. Put him on my tail. And let's cheat a little bit and go to missile view and see what's happening with this guy. Like I said, the missile flight has two phases. When it comes off the rail, it uses his rocket motor, which will burn out eventually. And then the missile is really just kind of coasting, and uh, it can't add any more energy. So we use that to our advantage by doing evasive turns and stuff like that. Every turn this missile makes from this point on is going to cost it energy, which is good for us. And if you look down at the bottom of the screen where it says TS, that's target speed, I believe. See how it's dropping? 370 knots. And I think we're traveling faster than the missile is right now, and it's dropping like a rock, so we're safe. Meanwhile, we still have the angry Sukhoi behind us. Let's look at his weapon stores. Looks like he only fired the missile on his left wing, and he's chasing us with a flat burner. So let's give him something to shoot at by... Turn it back into him. This time, I'm going to try something else. I'm going to get a little closer to him. I'm just going to dive for the ground. Radar guided missiles, as opposed to heat seekers or uh, infrared guided, they fly lead pursuit, which means that they point at where they think you're going to be by the time they reach you. So if you head for the ground and they, you're, you're drawing like an imaginary path into like subterranean levels below the ground, the missile thinks you're going to go underground and will fly accordingly, hopefully straight into the ground. 
so that's one way to do it. Also, I turned a beam to the target. He's off off my left wing here, which makes his radar, as I mentioned previously, it's going to have a harder time tracking us. And so far, I haven't used any countermeasures. I've dodged at least one missile. Let's see what the other one's doing. Is it fired? He's fired two missiles at us. I'll have to use TACV to figure out what happened to the third one. Here comes another. As you can see, it's going where we are going to go. And I turned into it without using countermeasures, mind you, and it overshot. It's another advantage that we have over our Russian counterparts is that our missiles don't leave that huge white smoke trail that we see right here. That one actually looks like it might hit us. And it missed. Oh. Left engine fire. It did hit us. Right engine fire. Notice after I did my first defensive Radar turn. Failure. Let's punch out. We'll do that again here in a minute. When I did my first, like, like, the defensive turn, when I saw that next to the last one coming at us, I bled a lot of speed, which led me a little more defenseless against the one that actually hit us. So that was actually pretty not bad. We managed to dodge. Let's count them. One, two, three, f we dodged. One, two, three. <laughs> Radar guided missiles and failed to dodge an infrared guided missile. Aha! That's probably what it is. Let's go check tag view and see what happened. Actually, we can see it here. Yeah, it was the R 73, the close range AA 11, or the R uh, Alamo, that actually hit us, but we dodged these pretty pretty handily without having to use electronic countermeasures or chaff. We'll get to that in just a moment. Okay, here we are in tech view, and let's see how I did. I'm going to speed up time a little bit here. So here we are in the closing stages. I'm sorry, opening stages. Drop my tanks. You can see this blue beam here. I can't tell whose that is, but we're locking each other up. There goes his first R-27. And all I did was turn and run the other way. That's all I had to do. If he fires that far away, the chances are excellent that his missile is going to run out of energy before it reaches me. You see how, how slow it's going compared to, you know, me? See, it's cold. I'm separating away from it. That's what that means. And it starts to fall from the sky. See that? So that was a pure kinetic defense against that. I'm kind of curious about this one. I know some of these came pretty close. So this is when I decided to dive for the deck, I think. Hoping it, see how it's pointing ahead? It's doing an intercept course. It's doing lead pursuit where it thinks I'm going to go. Now if I make a change, like if I pull up, it may not have enough energy to chase me, so damn, that was close. Uh, <laughs> the things you learn from tag view, huh? And the third one I think is the one that actually, yeah. Let's see how this went. So now I'm in way closer than you ever want to be against the Sukhoi. <clears throat> so it fired a another R27 radar guided. See how it's flying that intercept course? It looks like it overshot. I just turned and I think it may have also lost track of me. I think I might have it might have uh, lost guidance. So let's go to Mr. Flanker here. <laughs> P 
perfect illustration of why you don't want to get close to these guys. See, he's not even really pointing at me. He's pointing off this way. He was able to look up with that uh, helmet mounted sight probably and uh, got a good lock on me. Look how tight that missile turned right off the rail. Has plenty of energy and went real too close and I just don't have the situational awareness or energy even to, to spoof that thing. Had I been pumping flares, maybe it would attract it, maybe it wouldn't have. But the result there is uh, lots of F-15 parts decorated in the countryside. Okay, so hopefully that tack view was informative. Here we are in sortie number two in the same exact starting conditions. This time I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to try and get a little closer to him. And I'm also going to use countermeasures. Now, like I said, two kinds of guided systems. And we carry three countermeasures to kind of fight against the missiles. One, here we look down here where it says CHF 120 FLR 60, that's chaff and flares, and those, if you aren't familiar, are countermeasures that we physically drop out of our aircraft. Chaff is nothing more than a bunch of strips of tin foil, which, you, which creates a big radar signature, which can confuse an incoming radar guided missile. And the flares are these really hot things flares that will pump out of the back of the aircraft, which are good at defeating a infrared guided missile. So let's zoom out a little bit and I'll show you what they look like coming out the back of the airplane. Here is one. That's a flare. And you can do cool stuff like drop flares while you're rolling around and shoot them all over the place. Those are very hot and uh, enemy missiles like to track onto those. And chaff, you won't be able to see so well. Like I said, it's just little bits of tin foil. You can kind of escape them out. That creates a really big radar signature. Anyway, let's drop the tanks. We can see what we have remaining. The third countermeasure, like I said, we had three, is. Let's go back to pause. We have an electronic countermeasure suite. If you've seen A-10s or F-16s carry this funny looking pod under the wings or under the belly. That's a radar jammer. No, the F-15 can carry those as well, I think, but I'm not sure. Either way, we don't need to here because we carry a pretty good ECM suite inside the aircraft, kind of, as it stands. I don't know which antennas do what, but there's a bunch of them all over the aircraft. You can see them sticking out down below the nose and up on the tail and up on the dorsal fin. So it's internal to the plane, and I don't know exactly what's where, but we're going to turn that on. We've got that bound to my HOTAS. And you look here in the RWR, see that little flash, flash, flash? That means our ECM is active. Let's talk about radar again here. Imagine, I like to think of radar as you're, you're in a really dark room, and you have a flashlight and a pistol. <laughs> and the pistol is your radar-guided missile, right? Uh, for you to be able to see your target, you're going to have to turn on your flashlight, so we turn on our radar. And that means we can point the flashlight at our target, point our pistol at the target, you know, see those with light beams reflected off the target that we illuminate with our flashlight, aim our weapons accordingly. Now, in that dark room scenario, imagine that your target also is carrying a flashlight and to screw you up, he shines that very bright flashlight directly into your eyeball. And that is a simplified version of what an ECM pod does. It's a radar jammer and it jams things. Uh, it's actually really complicated. Most of it's fairly classified, so we don't know exactly how they work. But the general concept is that it you know, overloads um, the enemy antenna basically by like shining a really bright light into its eye, so it can't really distinguish what's what. Now we turn on our ECM pod. You can see how that's a solid asterisk on the RWR. In return, he has also turned on his ECM system. And you see all these little fake returns, all these little um, rectangles and garbage and stuff like that? That's how DCS presents enemy ECM on your radar. So our radar's on but it's being jammed. Now, as we close, get close to the target, 
the radar is pretty powerful, it will be able to, uh, what they call, burn through the ECM jamming and just be able to take the target anyway. The problem with that is it will have to do that as a, as a, at a much reduced range. And like we experienced in the previous scenario, getting close to a Sukhoi is a generally bad idea, but we may have to in this case. So I'm going to try and use all, all I'm going to use uh, all kinds of tricks here. I got my ECM on, I got my thumb on the chaff and flare button. Okay, so we burnt through his ECM. He may or may not have done so with us. We'll go ahead and lock him up. He has burnt through our ECM and he's fired a missile. So I'm going to turn my beam. I'm going to start pumping chaff. I'm going to light my afterburner because I don't care about my heat signature. It's a radar guided missile and I'm going to dive for the ground. Obviously, putting a physical barrier between you and the incoming missile is a good idea, too, so we can hit for this little canyon. I don't see the incoming missiles, but we can assume they're there. It's also really good to break that radar lock, too, because uh, if, if you're behind something, you can't see through the belt. Alright, where's that missile? There it is. No. I'm going to start pumping flares now, too, because I don't know which kind of missile he's using. He could be close enough to me. Oh, that missile's guiding on us real good. Let's head for the deck. That felt like it was really close. <laughs> Another one coming in. And as they say, it's better to be overstressed the aircraft. Oops. I'm shocked that didn't hit us. Uh, it's better to be out of countermeasures and fuel than out of aircraft, so I'm running at full afterburner and just spamming countermeasures like mad. Jeez, this is just horrible. Oy. That probably is going to hit us. Yep. So, we did much better that time. He hit us with his la uh, next to the last missile. Well, no, he's still got a bunch left. He's got three. It's another advantage the Sukhoi has. He carries ten missiles to our eight. So let's see what happened here. Well, we dodged four and eight to fifth. I'll show that up in tech view here shortly. Okay, second sortie, and this time we're employing countermeasures. And you'll see those dump out of the back of the aircraft as these uh, kind of yellow cubes. Although I don't think you'll be able to see my ECM. Chaff and flare. Yeah, there you go. Let's speed up a little bit, shall we? Wait, did I pause for a long time or what? Okay, so here we go. Missile number one, let's follow that. It looks like either it ran out of energy here or decided it wanted to chase that particular countermeasure. Or maybe it hit the ground. You know what, let's back up a little bit. Hard to say. It looks like it may have hit that mountaintop there. Missile number two. I 
should have pumped out a lot more chaff here. Looks like that was defeated kinetically as well. It just didn't have the juice to turn with us. Missile number three. Hasn't been fired yet. Let's go and see what does. All in all, these R-27s seem pretty easy to dodge in the current build of DCS. Now, what is not easy to... Well, here, let's see what happened with this one. I think I was just kind of low on energy and wasn't too aware of what this was doing. I wasn't pumping chaff. I was slow. And it still missed. See, there's the intercept course right there. See how it does that? Boom. All right. So now you see what not to do. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, I want to show you one more thing, and I think you kind of generally get the idea here, hopefully. Um, remember that the, the, the missile is nothing but a rocket, and it's going to burn up its fuel in the initial stages of, of launch, and then after that, it's just kind of coasting with whatever energy it had after the... the uh, fuel burned up, right? Also remember this flying through atmosphere. So the higher up it is, uh, the, the hotter it is, the thinner the atmosphere is, which means that uh, it means a couple things for the missile. It means one, it usually can't turn as tightly at high altitudes, and low density air because of the fins have less to act, less air to act upon. But it also bleeds less energy per turn because there's less air resistance up high and less air resistance in hot air. Down low, you generally have an advantage. Even though the missiles can turn a little more tightly, every time it makes a turn in that thick air down low, it's bleeding energy out. So one trick you can do is to kind of put the missile at like 45 degrees off your nose and fly a head real low and fly a spiral pattern around the missile and every, like and keep it constantly turning. And as it's doing that, it's bleeding more and more energy. Now that takes a lot of nerves because it's coming straight at you. Uh, it may or may not work. Uh, I think it works pretty well. It's one of the best options if you're flying the Mirage, for example, even or even the F-5. And it works against any kind of missile, whether it's heat guided or, or radar guided. By the way, Diving for the deck to try and trick the missile into hitting the ground works really well against radar-guided SAMs and somewhat well against radar-guided air-to-air missiles, but it does not work against infrared-guided missiles. IR-guided missiles like the Sidewinder, uh, the R-73, and the R-27ET, these don't fly a lead pursuit curve. They don't aim in front of you, they aim straight at you, pure pursuit. So trying to trick them into flying into the ground is not going to work. You'll just run out of altitude. But what you can do, if you're really fancy, is try and get it to lock onto the sun. That is that is an option. So I'm going to turn on my, my jammer pod. And I'm going to try and fly real low and do that spiral defense. Uh, there's a word for it. It's like orthogonal or something. You just kind of fly a helix around that missile. And you want to do that in full afterburner because you're going to be bleeding energy too. The difference being that the missile has a very small amount of fuel to burn and you've got a lot more than he does. Actually, I'm going to shut off my ECM because I kind of wanted this guy to fire early. Using that ECM forces him to fire close in, and that's not something we want to do against the flanker. So if you're going to be using ECM, 
you'll have to read the play and see what it's appropriate and what it's not. If you want to, you know, it's up to you. You're, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to read that, figure it out on your own. It's gonna be very situational. So you can remember that the, in comparison to our AMRAMs, that uh, our 27ER actually can fire first, but it has much worse energy retention capabilities, and you can kind of turn the other way and run for that pretty easily. You saw how easy it was for me to dodge at least the first three or four without using countermeasures at all. So I think the AMRAM has kind of an energy superiority over it. I'm really not seeing this guy. Oh, another thing about ECM, although it does jam the radar, and they can't see exactly where you are, they will definitely know that you are there. Like I said, it's like shining a flashlight in somebody's face. You may not be able to, you know, they may not be able to see exactly where that light is coming from, but they definitely know it's there. So keep that in mind. If you want to hide, ECM is the opposite of what you want to do. Okay, lock him up just for poops and giggles, and notice that he is jamming us as well. I'm going to go to full afterburner. I'm going to have to drop my tanks. Here comes the missile. I can't see it. But I know it's there. start pumping chaff. Some nuance when you're dropping countermeasures. If you want to avoid... If you're trying to spoof a missile and the missile's already in flight, you want to launch those countermeasures pretty quickly close to, just close to each other to kind of muddy your signature and make it look like a blur. If you're trying to keep from getting locked up at all, or you're at longer range, you want to drop your countermeasures farther apart. See the missile coming in. There it is. This, this kind of spiral around the missile tactic is something you can use uh, if you are out of long range missiles. Oh! <coughs> and you need to get in close. Obviously, it takes balls of steel, and you need to be better at it than I am. Uh, you know what, I think I want to try that one more time. And also notice that we dodged two of uh, those R27s, but that this R73 is apparently much more accurate uh, and close in. But you can't really, that's fired so close in, you really don't have a lot of time to set up that spiral pattern to fly around the missile. Anyway, you get the idea. I hope that was educational for you. It kind of shows what you can and can't get away with a little bit when trying to dodge those missiles. And you put that together with firing AMRAMs at your opponent, you can kind of see where you're going. Uh, you want to fire your slammer, your AMRAM, uh, wait out the, uh, you know, the R27 is going to come in at you, so you're going to have to wait for that a little bit. When your missile goes pitbull, then you can do all these cool uh, evasive turns and maneuvers and turn on your jammer or whatnot uh, to try and not get hit yourself. So that's the general idea. We'll get to that hopefully with the next mission. All right, last one, and I hope it's helpful for you. Uh, I really could have flown that spiral pattern around the missile. I had it, I was trying to do it, but you notice I didn't have it in the right place in my canopy when I started my spiral. It was just generally quite sloppy, so uh, hopefully you at least get the idea of how to do it. So I should have been flying kind of like that, but it wasn't.
See right now it seems kind of low on energy and whatever I do to evade that missile, even if it's just flying in a straight line, seemed to work pretty well. See how that worked? Sort of. And at this point, I'm just too too close to do any kind of kind of reaction. So I wanted to show you the cool spiral pattern, but you'll just have to. Uh, here, let's go back. Let's go back here. Okay, so here, if I was doing it right, I would put this kind of here and fly a spiral pattern like that around it toward the target. And then hopefully get in close to use my gun or whatever on Mr. Sukhoi here. In this scenario, clearly that didn't work. Here's where I reverse my spiral and that just, you know, it wasn't very clean, but hopefully you get the kind of ideal idea. And then smack, I got too close to the flanker. So the takeaway message is here, don't get close to a flanker. <laughs> but if you do, you do have some options, right? All right, I'll see you next time. We'll be doing a real live BVR jousting match with our missiles intact. Later.